Hey, Way fam, thanks for tuning in. We pray that today's message impacts your life. Let's get ready for this service. Thank you so much for coming out. And tonight's gonna be a, an amazing service. I just wanna kind of give you a kind of how the night's gonna go. We're gonna go through Nassar's testimony, which is gonna be one of the most powerful testimony you've ever heard. We're gonna go through his testimony, included with the testimony, we're gonna include the word of God. We're gonna have a teaching that Dr. Nassar has entitled, Trauma Has a Voice. We're gonna include the teaching, and at the end of tonight's broadcast, we're gonna be praying for people. So at this moment, begin to send your messages in for healing. You wanna get on the phone right now, text some people. Nassar even said a little bit earlier, call somebody, maybe you have someone in the hospital, a family that's sick. The last two weeks, we've been talking about Jesus, our healer, and tonight we're gonna activate it. And I wanna, before we go into Nassar's testimony, we have a video um, that the 700 Club, you had an interview with the 700 Club. Yes. So we're gonna see that here, but before we do that, I wanna give a praise report. We've been praying for one of our members, her name is Kathy Alvarado. She came to us a few months back, and she was sick and she had cancer. We began to pray for her, Nassar. Yes. She went to the doctors today, they gave her her reports, She's completely healed. Praise God. Kathy has gotten healed, and that's what God is doing right now. He's our savior, and he's our healer. So congratulations, Kathy. Great testimony. She got the reports back today. She is cancer-free. So again, thank, thank you so much you, for tuning in. At this time, let's go into the testimony video done by the 700 Club. Take a look at this dynamic testimony of Nassar Iqbal. Nassar Iqbal was alone the morning a young man walked into his convenience store in New York City. I asked him, can I help you? He turned and said to me, give me my money. And I tried to open the cash drawer, but he couldn't open. The man pulled out a lead pipe and beat Nassar unconscious. A store manager from next door called the police for help, and Nassar was rushed to the hospital. I was a 22 days in coma and doctor said to my wife I know to have a head injury I have a traumatic brain injury this means my right side brain is damaged and there is only few hope this means 20 to 50 percent chance I can survive after three weeks Nasser came to he'd live but he suffered severe brain damage that left the left side of his body completely paralyzed Nasser also lived in constant pain but something else was troubling him while in the coma, he had a strange encounter, a vision of Christ talking directly to him. Nasa went to church, but never had a personal relationship with Christ. I saw the vision. Christ appeared to me. He said, Nasa, you want to live? I said, yes, Lord, I want to live. He said, if you want to live, you have to be born again. I never heard in my life what mean of born again. I asked him, Lord, how I can be born again? My mom is 60 years old, my father is dead. Despite the vision, Nasser lost all hope. He asked to pray with a pastor before he died. A pastor visiting the hospital spoke to Nasser. To his surprise, the pastor used the same phrase he'd heard in the vision. One Christian pastor came. Again, I asked him the same question. Pastor, I need a confession. He says, son, confession alone does nothing. Repent and give your heart to the Lord. You shall be saved, you'll be healed, and you will be born again. I say, what, born again? What shall I do for that? Then he said, pray after me. When I prayed, Lord, come in my life. My life is your. And that time, the electricity passed through my paralyzed side. And it's changed my life. Doctors told Nasser if he didn't improve in the next 90 days, he'd never get better. Doctor said to me, we give you 90 days. If during 90 days your body give any progress, we keep in the rehab, we work on you, we give you therapies. But if not any improvement, we send you long-term a patient. Nasser not only improved, the medical staff was amazed at his progress. Before 90 days finish, my body not only give progress, I start walking without any walker. Doctor was saying, if I crawl or I walk with a walker, this is a miracle. After several months of therapy and a major surgery, Nasser made a complete recovery.
Today, Nasser, his wife, and two children live in Southern California. He's dedicated to telling others about his amazing story and his unbelievable recovery. But I receive my healing when I give my heart to the Lord. My repentance is, Lord was waking, waiting for my response. He gave me the message when I respond to Him, when I say yes to Him and healing start happening. That changed my life. Jesus is my Lord. Lord mean He owns everything. For me, is a Lord mean He's my everything. Wow, what an amazing testimony. Yes, God. God is good. And Dr. Nasser, he's been going all over the world now as a healing evangelist. We're gonna get into that later. But just looking at that story there, Nasser, I wanna go a little more in detail. So you owned a convenience store in Brooklyn, New York. A man came in, he robbed you, he had a pipe. Yes. And he hit you over the head. Yes. What happened, uh, I, he asked me for money. I tried to open cash drawer, I couldn't open. Next thing, he had a backpack, pull out the metal pipe, hit on my head. Last thing, I, rem I feel the fire on my head. And then I remember, last thing, uh, police came and asked me who was there, how many people was there. And that, uh, after that, I don't know. I went to deep, deep sleep. And they say I was in a stage four coma. Stage four coma mean when person almost like a dead person, I was not able to hear anything. I was not able to feel anything. Uh, only the, uh, light, the machine keep me alive. You see this here, that's, in these days you heard the respirator, people on the life sport. I was a complete life sport. They breathe me from here. They feed me from here. So 22 days like I was a dead person. Even doctor said to my wife, if he, I make it, I'm believing vegetable. Maybe my left side is complete paralyzed and my brain is damaged. And wow. they say, let him go. One doctor said, let him go. During a 22 day coma, I mean, were you able to hear? Were you, you couldn't move? I, I don't know what, I was feel like I'm in a dream. I, I, I don't feel anything. I was, I, I don't know what, anything about 22 days. And only I, I had a different but dream when I was with Jesus. And after that dream, I came out from coma. Wow, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're in a coma for 22 days. Yes. And really quick, your wife, what was your wife thinking? What was she saying during, so you, have a, you have a wife, what was she saying during that time? Yes, when I was in life sport, doctor gave her choice. He said, you want to wait or let him go if you want to go. And she said, he came home and she said, Christ, he said, Lord, my husband is dying. I had nobody around me wow. to help me. And when she's praying, she felt the presence of God in the room. And in this presence, she heard the voice in her heart. Your husband going to live and not die. Wow. She said, Lord, I believe it. She said, I, I got trust my husband going to live, not die. Next day she came, I'm still on life support. Next week, I'm still on, but she, doctor said, you believe? She said, I, I believe Lord is going to heal him. And that's what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. And I know you wanted to tap on that as well, but Pastor Marco, we talked about it last week where we need to resist and we got to fight. I know you wanted to tap on that. What does that mean to resist sickness? That's what your wife was doing. Yes, resist mean, you know, all circumstances was saying, do, like, you, you can see I'm a, I was in a live sport and people said I was so terrible looking. If somebody visit me, never able to visit again. And, but she said, no, I believe what Lord said. She, she resist every voices wow. and she said no i believe what the lord said Amen. i don't i don't want to believe what i feel it what i see it i what i hear it i'm going to believe what god said man that's powerful as you're listening right now you know again at the end of this service this interview we're going to be praying for people all we need to do is just believe and accept it you're going to get healed tonight there's somebody watching tonight there's there's thousands of people watching tonight get ready a healing is coming. So you're in a coma for 22 days. Your wife is believing. You're not saved at this time. You don't know no, no, Jesus. No. You're not saved. No. And your wife was saved? No, we, we grew up in a Muslim country, nominal Christian. And I came from the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, and I have no church experience. And how did your I wife was, know how to believe? How did she, she just went to God? What happened? She said, when this voice she heard, she said, there is no hope 
darkness, hopeless. And that's the only what she felt in the Lord said. She said, I hang it to that what God said. That's powerful. See, your wife's hanging on to the word, the voices she got. My husband's going to live. He's not going to die. Yes. Now, in the 22-day coma now, I seen on the video, and you kind of shared it earlier, you got a dream. Yes. And you were visited by who? Share that dream with us. Yes. I was in a dream, and I, then I, in 22 days, I saw, I feel like I'm going somewhere, somewhere, back, and I feel tap on my shoulder, but look, it was a Jesus. And he said to me, now, sir, you want to live? I said, yes, Lord, I want to live. He said, you have to born again. I even asked the Lord, Lord, how? <laughs> my mom is old. My father is dead. How he can? By the way, I never heard about Nicodemus story. I never heard about salvation. So I was questioning like Nicodemus. And the Lord said to me, if you want to live, you have to born again. When he said, I was just thinking how I can born again. And I came out from coma. And I heard a doctor calling. You know, uh, they're calling my first name, my last name. You know, where are you? What's going on to you? Because they saw the m machine, the monitor change, everything. So when Jesus came in that dream, after yes. that dream, you woke up. Yes, I woke up. Out of the coma. I woke up from coma. And doctor was amazed and said, he's alive, he's alive. I said, what's going on? I don't know anything. What happened to me? And they are telling me what happened to me. I was, they say, you know, you are 22 days and you're lucky you get back your life. We have a good news and bad news. Yeah, yeah. I say, what is a good news? He say, good news, you make it. Bad news, look like your left side is complete paralyzed, your right side brain damage. Maybe you have a, a shorter memory problem, language problem. You have to, we don't know. And uh, we send you the rehab. And if your body give any progress, we keep in the rehab. Otherwise, we send you long term pay. Maybe if my no any progress, maybe I'm a living uh, vegetable or I don't know, we don't know uh, wow. if your body give any progress or not. So after that dream, you woke up out of a 22 day coma. You guys, this is the God that we serve. He's a healer. Everything that we've been studying the last two weeks is kind of like seeing a live example of what God can do. So after you get visited by Jesus, you wake up out of the coma yes. miraculously the doctors are telling you now, if you do survive even further, you're going to be a living vegetable. Yes. So now you went into the rehab. What was the rehab like? What happened in rehab? And that happened, you know, first good thing happened to me because I, guys, just keep in your mind. I never knew next day I'm going to live or die. And that time I was thinking one thing, maybe Jesus give me the chance to make a peace with him, maybe forgiveness my sin. And oh. I was a, have a Catholic faith. I knew I, I need confession. Maybe Jesus give me the life so I confess my sin and die. But that time, the good thing happened, pastor came to me. And I said, pastor, I need confession. So a pastor you, came to visit you. Yes. While you were there in the rehab. Yes. The pastor came and yeah. Yes. Well. As pastor, I, I, I asked him, pastor, I need a confession. You remember I was Catholic there. He says, son, confession alone does nothing. Repent. Give wow. your heart to the Lord. You shall be saved. You heal. You will be born again. When pastor said to me, born again, that clicked into me. Oh my God. That I heard what Jesus said to That's me. That's what Jesus said in the oh, dream. Oh, I say, no, I understand. Pastor, please tell me about what mean of born oh again. Oh my gosh, what an experience. And when I prayed, Lord, and... I, Lord, come in my life. My keep in your mind, my left side is completely paralyzed. As I prayed, I feel an electric shock hit me, and I saw myself running on the, like a TV screen on the wall. So when you said the prayer, the sinner's prayer, yeah. you felt an electric shock yes. hit, your, hit yes. your body yes. when you received Jesus as your Savior. Yes. And as you watch the video, as that, my body, you no. Know, Completely, uh, you know, instantly I'm healed, but I know I start feeling. I know my left side has no feeling, but that time feeling started. Oh I believe, gosh. and Jesus, that's why, you know, first Jesus gave me hope through that. When I saw myself running, wow. I heard, this is you, Nasser. I want to heal you. I want to restore you. Man. And that's what Pastor Mark, we even mentioned this last Sunday. In order to get a breakthrough, your thoughts, your words, your actions, they got to be in agreement. They got to come together. How long were you in rehab? Uh, about uh, one year. One year. Yes. And then 
Yes, and that you know, is a long testimony, but yeah. I tell you, it's cha- I came out from rehab empowered. Wow. And your skull, was there what? Yes. I know they hit you with the pipe. You yes. talked to me yesterday, our team. What, your, your, your skull, what happened to your skull? Yes, you see what my skull fractured in pieces and doctor, they removed my skull. They say, after one year, we put the plastic skull and during this surgery, maybe you die, you paralyze. You see me, you know, this is all, this is all plastic. This is a, a right, right, right side, side, right side, this is all plastic. And by the way, this is my real hair <laughs> because of, my skin, uh, plastic skull is under my skin. So your whole right side of your skull is plastic. Yes. Praise God. This is a miracle. Yes. And you know, Pastor Nasser Iqbal, he, he, he has a, a, an incredible message as well. God gave you a message um, tonight even called trauma has a voice. Can you explain what that means? Trauma has a voice. See, I passed my, Robert, what happening? I feel a few weeks back, I say, I, Hearing the uh, familiar voices, I hear everywhere. We uh, we we'll never be normal again, or you uh, be we we have to relearn new norm. And same voices I heard, kind of voices heard in the rehab. Doctors uh, doctor said to me, "You never be the normal again. Speak wow. to yourself. You are have a traumatic brain injury. You never be a, uh, same again." So that trauma speak to this time. This trauma is uh, all over the world. This time our nation yes. is a traumatized, right. and this trauma has a voices. Right. Maybe you're hearing from a CNN or Fox, the same thing I heard what doctors say to about me. They say, I've been never be normal again. I learned the new norm. And that is the voices was, I was, a, I was a hearing. You know, wow. that is very important when yeah. you hear these voices. When I was hearing, yeah. you know, first thing the Holy Spirit correct me. He said, Nasser, you speak to yourself. You, uh, God is with me, God is for me, and Nasser, I touch you, I'm going to heal you. Man, that's powerful. You know, and he, Dr. Nassar, you, you put three points or three keys on how to receive a healing. Number one, tonight you're saying, we need our head healed first. What do you mean by that, our head healed first? See, when Pastor uh, Marco was teaching resisting the sickness and seeking the healing. So what resistance that need efforts? You know, our brain is a, a tune of default is a negative. We, no need, nobody have to taught us, yeah, right. to teach us, to uh, have wow. a neg- negative thought. This yeah. come to us because devil bring to us. So we wow. have to resist those thoughts. We have to discipline. You know, the Bible words really touched me. When uh, Second Timothy 1, 7, we always quote that, for God you know, give us spirit of uh, fear, uh, he gave us a sp- uh, love and sound mind. Yes. But I like the NIV translation. NIV's translation say, for the spirit of God gave us, a, does not make us timid, but give us a power, love, and self-discipline. Wow, that's powerful. Self-discipline, God is not go- uh, going to do on our behalf. I have to do discipline. I, ha- I was speaking to myself, Nasser, you be all right, Nasser. Nasser, you, uh, you go through the all pain. The Holy Spirit saying to me, you go through the, all the therapy. Doesn't matter how painful. Go through this all the therapy. So I have to self-discipline myself. So what is discipline? We're in the head. And I want to say something too. When you were in rehab, um, you were in there for I think uh, how long again? One over one year. And you were there by your. You were there by yourself. Your family wasn't there. My wife and my kid. We. Uh, they, I sent them to California. They were in Southern California. I was in a New York, Staten Island, and remote area where is a no. I had no friend visiting me, but I have friend. I make a friendship with the Holy Spirit. Man, and you said that when you gave your life to Jesus, you became born again. You received your complete healing. Yes. Gosh. But uh, healing take process. Yeah. But His Holy Spirit give me the uh, help me as if I uh, my book is coming. I explain about the Holy Spirit as a life coach because I not had a preaching like you. You have a Pastor Marco <laughs> is preaching every week. I not have any preaching. Nobody was coming. But that time Holy Spirit was a teaching to me. Yeah. I want to share with you. I think you quote before uh, Pastor Marco also quote yeah. uh, James first one six and eight really. How we need to discipline yes. ourselves. They say, but let him ask in faith 
with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven by the toss by the wind for let note that man suppose to that he will receive anything from the lord yeah. please listen that verse 8 he is a double minded oh, man yeah. unstable in all his way wow so what is a double mind you hearing what here say i believe i'm going to heal and here say no you know what doctor said to me i i know doctor said to me i have brain injury no i'm not going to yes i feel it but no i don't see that yeah. i'm still i i go through the therapy but that time i discipline myself wow holy spirit say nasser you go through the, all the pain I am with you I am for you so I learn what happened I I my head heal first right my head heal first and I am not alone I, I wow and I going we going to learn from the woman issue of the blood yeah, also yeah. you explain are we yeah. going to take this uh, story uh, and also you, they they told you you couldn't you weren't be able to talk anymore you're going to lose your language how many languages do you speak now I speak five languages <laughs> He speaks five languages now. I could barely speak one and he's speaking five. It doesn't matter what the enemy is saying. God is the final word. And that brings us to point number 2. Point number 1, the key, you said we need a healed head first. Number 2, self talk. Yes. That's you know how we are disciplined. That's very much a discipline. You hear the outside voices. Like today, you hear what the Fox News say, CBN say, NBN say. Your um, everybody, our everywhere, television, even everybody's have their own opinion. We oh, we never experienced that. We learn, but that talking echo is here in your mind. Wow. What you speaking to yourself? You thought, oh, I'm going to lose my job. I be ne- I how I'm going to survive yeah. or oh, maybe I'm going to get the coronavirus maybe I'm I'm uh, yes I have you remember that yeah. we talk about uh, we go through the sneeze or cough yeah. no, so maybe I, I have a, yeah. <laughs> yes maybe I have a coronavirus so that inside you there is a voice the devil is speak your own self you wow. talk and that self talk is a two type of self talk one is a const- uh, destructive self talk one is a constructive self talk wow I like that constructive Dist- self talk constructive self talk and destructive self talk wow i love that yes destructive self talks negative reasoning in the mind mm. and this destructive type of self talk cause you to be question yourself you even you question on your faith you question yourself yeah. and you say oh i i don't think so i never be have a faith and devil will say oh you know if sin you have or oh, maybe god is judging yeah. you and that what sooner you become paralyzed yeah, that's wow. i call the hopelessness right. and that hopelessness become around you like a python the python they wow. squeeze the every bit of faith out of you. Yeah. And I can only imagine when you were in the coma when you got out in the rehab, you were constantly hearing two voices, destructive talk. So was there was there a point where you wanted to give up at all when you're in rehab? Was there I, I mean I, I can only imagine what you were going through, what you were hearing the voices. Yes, I tell you, I had so much voices the devil saying, "You are the cause of all the trouble of your family why you bought this store why you came this country you are good had a middle east you had a good business you are and i was blaming you know you can forgive everybody yeah, it's hard right. to forgive your own self right. and then but holy spirit teach me he say speak to yourself god is with me god is for me Damn. that is called constructive self talk that's powerful self talk we need our head healed first number 3 praying and visualizing again this, these are keys to get a healing the third one is praying and visualizing it i like when you said earlier when you became born again you seen yourself running that means you have to visualize it can you talk on that that time i holy spirit give me i call the revelation hope holy spirit give me the vision and i saw myself and all the time holy spirit say focus on the picture focus wow. on what i show you and i always you know when my uh, i tell you first friend doctor tried to move my arm it was shaking and how so Oof. painful i feel like they stabbing me but i felt i keep myself visualized i'm running i'm running i'm going to I'm run i'm running man i just give you example of woman issue of the blood yeah you remember the story and i like it um, matthew chapter 9 the story verse 21 i want to just go yeah, for yes. sake of time yes 
that she said, for she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. She not speak to her friends. She not post on the Facebook. She not talk with her friends. <laughs> no. She talk to herself. What you are speaking to yourself, this is important. Man, that's powerful. What is not a matter what your friends said, what doctor said, what you speaking to you. Are you going to believe that report of doctor? Or are you going wow. to going to believe the report what what God said what to you God that says. time is a real exam That's of right. your faith yes. uh, this is a test of faith I love it and I tell you about the belief what I learned about the belief we talk about have belief have, everything is possible the yes. person who believe what is a yes. belief belief is an agreement between your head and your heart wow. what your heart said what the Holy Spirit speak to you That's good. Holy Spirit, the language of the Holy Spirit is a dream and vision. That is the language of the heart. When Holy Spirit speak to us, speaking to me, he was not speaking to me this year. Holy Spirit speaking to my heart. That's when uh, vision comes, this come and the, I call the vision of the, uh, the Holy Spirit gives you a glimpse of the future. Yeah, yeah. Wow, Holy Spirit give me that little glimpse of the future. I'm running and say, can you believe it? Man, that's the key. The Holy Spirit will give you a glimpse of the future. He's seen himself running. Maybe you're in a circumstance right now. If it's a, you need a physical healing tonight, if you need a spiritual healing, uh, maybe you're just really desperate. You've lost hope. Maybe you're depressed tonight. I know you have, can you tap on that really quick on the hope? You have a definition of hope. Yes. Pastor Robert, you always heard about fear. Where are you famous? Yeah. For F-E-A-R, yeah. acronym of fear is a false evidence appear real. real. But what Lord gave me for hope? What is my, my upcoming books I explain about hope is a H-O-P-E, stand for have original picture evidence. Wow. So what does it mean? We can, you can create your own picture. That's right. See the word of God, what the word of God is speaking to you. Can you see yourself in this word of God, the That's promise right. of God? We have to see our picture in the promise of God. Man, we powerful. not see that this happened to the woman issue of the blood. Yeah. We not see this happen to blind Bartimaeus. This not happened to Canaanites women. Right, right. We have to see for ourselves. Whole, Jesus was a, giving this all tutorial, like a Google have a tutorial. Yeah. This is all the scripture is a tutorial for us. Man. We can see our healing example over there. Like, I remember the story of blind Bartimaeus. Yeah. When he came to Jesus, he was a blind. Yeah. He speak loud, he say, have mercy on me, son of David, have mercy. And we heard what Jesus' disciples say, be quiet, you so loud. Otherwise, shut up, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But Bible said he speak louder. He speak louder. Because yes. he was a, already healed here. Gosh. In his head, is in imagination. Man. So what is we talking about the imagination? Imagination is should be for God to answer your prayer, our thought, word, and our imagination need to be changed. Wow. We have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. That. Sometimes words. we Christians see we have a, a faith. Faith is positive confession. Faith is not a positive confession. Right. And hope is not a desire, wishful oh. thinking. Hope is a real positive imagination. Yes, yeah, right. Hope is a positive imagination. Oh, I love that's that. That's what I call H-O-P, have original picture evidence. Let's we get our evidence, our original picture from the Bible. Yeah, In my Bible. case, I not had a teaching. Yeah, you don't I not, teach. But Holy Spirit become my teacher. Gosh. Holy Spirit revealed, maybe what Pastor Robert and Pastor Marco is doing the Holy Spirit job. Holy Spirit speaking through them. That's right. So you can picture yourself. That's right. How Lord want to heal you. You know, I see all thank kind of a Jesus. healing. Yes. And I thank see you, that Lord. the Lord is healing and restoring people. Wherever yes. I share my testimony, wherever I go, and Lord is fulfilling his promise. God is a healing people. I tell you, people say, you, uh, can you heal ca cancer? Oh, yeah. I say, I can heal uh, even headache, yeah. but the healer who live in me, That's he right. can heal any sickness. We just had Kathy, one of our members. She went yes. to the doctors today and her reports came back negative. You know, as we're speaking right now, again, number one, head healed first. Number two, self-talk. Self-talk. And number three, pray and visualize it. Yes. As we're coming to a close in this part of the service. Now, in a moment, this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna go back to our worship team. They're gonna sing a half a song or a song just to really prepare our hearts and our spirits for a healing. 
visualize it right now. If you have cancer, you have coronavirus, you just got a report from the doctor, visualize your miracle. You have pain in your back. You have some, maybe pain arthritis. See your hands moving, your knees moving, your legs. Maybe you have a, a blood infection right now. See yourself completely healed. But before we go on to the healing part, you mentioned the pastor came to your room and you became born again. Now, this is the key. If you're watching us right now and you haven't given your life to Jesus yet, what is born again? Really simple. I have a physical birthday. I was born October 25th, 1977. That's my physical birthday. Being born again is this. When I give my life to Jesus, and now I have a spiritual birthday, my spirit man comes alive. So here it goes. You're watching this right now. You haven't given your life to Jesus yet. You're not saved. You're not born again. The biggest healing of all is salvation. Amen. Jesus forgiven us of all of our sins. So if you're watching this right now, and you're saying, Pastor, I want to become born again. This testimony has changed my life forever. I'll never be the same again. I believe that Jesus came on this earth. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. Wherever you're at right now, yes. I want you to yes. bow your head and close your eyes. Maybe you're in the living room right now. Maybe you're at your job. Maybe you're driving. And you're driving, don't close your eyes, just say this prayer with us. This is your day of salvation. And then right after this prayer, me and Nassar, he's going to start praying. He's going to get words of knowledge. God's going to start speaking to him. He's going to call people out of social media. God's going to start to move. But first, let's become born again. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus. I am a sinner. I'm a sinner. In need of a savior. Need a savior. Jesus, tonight, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I put my faith in you. Yes, Lord. I repent yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. of all yes, my sins. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Yes, Lord. Today, I receive my new life. Yes, Lord. I am born again. If I were to die tonight, I would go straight to heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer, congratulations. Praise God. Praise God. You Thank are you saved. You are born again. Hey, Way fam. Thanks for tuning in. I pray that you receive the blessing from this message. And if you would like to support this ministry, click the link below. And until then, see you next time.